Well, no, I wasn't joking whatsoever. We are in fact integrating E to some matrix function of X, and it's going to be extremely cool. First up, how do you even integrate a matrix? Well, if I have a matrix function M of X, then that means the entries of the matrix are functions of X. For example, in the two by two case, I can represent this as F sub one, one of X, F sub one, two of X, F sub two, one of X, and F sub two, two of X. And integrating this thing is no big deal whatsoever. All you have to do is integrate the individual entries with respect to X. Okay, cool. But the thing is, we're not just integrating any ordinary matrix function. We're integrating E to some matrix function of X, which means we're going to have to study something called the matrix exponential function. Now, the matrix exponential is something that takes a matrix M sub 1 as an input and spits out another matrix M sub 2. So our goal would be to determine exactly what matrix M, this E to the given matrix spits out. And once we have that matrix, we can integrate it with respect to X quite easily. But to achieve that target, we're gonna have to understand exactly how this thing works. So here's the deal. The matrix exponential function is defined in analogy to the regular old exponential function e to the x, which we know can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k by k factorial. So in analogy to the series expansion, we define e to some matrix m as the sum over the non-negative integers k of m to the k by k factorial. Okay, cool. So now we have some idea of how to feed the exponential function matrices. But we normally don't just feed the matrix in directly, we prefer to diagonalize it. That is express M as a product B times some diagonal matrix D times B inverse. And what exactly is the utility of this? Well, notice that M to the K just means that you have B times D times B inverse times b, d, b inverse, k times, right? So you have b, d, b inverse over here at the end as well. And notice what happens along this chain of multiplication. The b inverse and b cancel, cancel out. You have d times d, which is d squared. And then the next b inverse cancels out with the next b and so on and so forth until you're left with m to the k being equal to b times d to the k times b inverse. And this is really convenient because d being a diagonal matrix can be represented in the two by two form, that is as a, b, zero, zero. So you can verify by multiplication by hand a couple of times that d to the k is in fact a to the k, b to the k, zero, zero, as in you just have to raise the entries in the principal diagonal to the same uh, to the same exponent as the matrix D. And all of this is really convenient for the series expansion as well, because once you have M in its diagonalized version, we can write E to the M as the sum over K of B times D to the K times B inverse over K. And since B and B inverse are both independent of the K variable, we can write this as b times the sum over k of d to the k by k factorial times b inverse on the right. Okay, now let's expand d to the k in its matrix form. Well, that gives me b times the sum over k, oh, terribly sorry about that, of 1 by k factorial times a to the k, b to the k, 0, 0, B inverse. And 1 by K factorial is just some scalar that multiplies with each entry of the given matrix. So we can write this as B times the sum over K of A to the K by K factorial, B to the K by K factorial, 0, 0, times B inverse. And what does it mean to add up matrices? Well, matrices are added 
entry-wise, right? We just add up the corresponding entries. So that means the summation operator acts over the individual entries and we get B times this matrix with entries sum over K of A to the K by K factorial sum over K of B to the K by K factorial 0, 0 and B inverse. Now, what exactly is this thing, a to the k by k factorial, sum over the non-negative integers k? Well, this is exactly what e to the a looks like, and this is exactly what e to the b looks like. So this is pretty cool because we conclude that e to the m equals b times e to the a, e to the b, 0, 0, B inverse, where A and B are the entries of the corresponding diagonal matrix. So now that we have a plan, it's time to set it in motion. And the first thing I'd like to do is factor out a negative x squared term from the given matrix. So I can write this as e to the negative x squared times this very simple matrix 0, 1, 1, 0, integration with respect to x. I'm going to call this matrix A, and I'm going to diagonalize it. Why am I shifting my attention to the matrix A instead of the given matrix? Well, one reason is the matrix A is pretty simple, as in it's very easy to diagonalize this. So I can expand A as B times D times B inverse, where D is a diagonal matrix, of course, A, B, 0, 0, where we're looking for the entries A and B, as well as the matrix B. Another reason is that once you have this diagonalization for the matrix A, the diagonalization for the given matrix that is negative x squared times A is pretty easy to figure out. All I have to do is replace D by negative x squared times D. And expanding D in the matrix form gives me B times negative AX squared times negative BX squared, 0, 0 b inverse. So that's negative x squared times a, which implies that e to the negative x squared times a, that's our, that's the matrix in our target integral, equals b times this matrix e to the negative ax squared, e to the negative bx squared, oh wait, terribly sorry about that, 0, 0, b inverse. So the plan is still going to work. All we have to do is diagonalize the matrix A by looking for the diagonal matrix as well as the matrix B. And for that, we need eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So it's time for some nice linear algebra. Now for the eigenvalues, we're going to have to solve the characteristic equation. That is the determinant of lambda times the identity matrix I sub 2 minus A being equal to 0, where lambda is an eigenvalue. So solving this equation means I'm solving lambda times I sub 2 is just lambda, lambda, 0, 0, right? Minus the matrix A, which is 0, 1, 1, 0. So this implies that the determinant of lambda, negative 1, negative 1, lambda equals 0, which implies that lambda squared minus 1 equals 0, or lambda equals plus or minus 1. So one eigenvalue is lambda sub 1 equal to 1, and the other is lambda sub 2 equal to negative 1. And the eigenvalues give you your required diagonal matrix, which is 1, negative 1, 0, 0. Okay, cool. And now to find the matrix B, for that we're going to need the eigenvectors. For the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 1, we just have to solve the equation a times the eigenvector v sub 1 equal to lambda sub 1 times v sub 1. And expanding this gives us 0, 1, 1, 0 times the vector x, y equal to lambda sub 1 is just 1, so I still get the same vector. So this implies on multiplication that we have y, x equal to x, y. So x is a free variable set equal to 1 for convenience purposes, and that gives us x equal to 1, y equal to 1. So the eigenvector v sub 1 has a very nice structure, that is, it has components 1 and 1. Similarly, solving the equation a times v sub 2 equal to lambda sub 2 times v sub 2, 
where lambda sub 2 is negative 1, gives us the eigenvector v sub 2 equal to 1 and negative 1. So combining these two eigenvectors gives us the matrix B. So we go 1, 1, 1, and negative 1. And the inverse of B is pretty easy to find using the standard drill for inverting 2 by 2 matrices. So perform that and you'll get the matrix 1 half, 1 half, 1 half, and negative 1 half, which we immediately recognize as the matrix B just being multiplied by 1 half. Okay, cool. And now we have all the ingredients for the diagonalization of the matrix A. So A equals the matrix B times the diagonal matrix 1, negative 1, 0, 0, times B inverse, which is just B times 1 half. Alrighty then, so this implies that negative X squared times A, that's the matrix in the target integral, equals 1 half of B times negative X squared, X squared, 0, 0 times b. And this further implies that e to the negative x squared times a, that's our integrand, is 1 half of b times e to the negative x squared times e to the x squared 0, 0 times b. Now it's time to multiply the matrices, and I'm just going to write out the answer. And finally, standing before you in all its glory, after taking this diagonal matrix and multiplying it by the matrix B on the left and the right hand side of it, we have the matrix corresponding to the integrand e to the negative x squared times a. And all that's left is to integrate this, and we know exactly how to integrate matrix functions, we integrate entry-wise. So the integral of e to the negative x squared is, you guessed it, the error function, erf x, and the integral, wait, we have this multiple of root pi by 2 as well. And the integral of e to the x squared with respect to x is root pi by 2 times the imaginary error function, erf phi x. So this implies that i equals root pi by 4 times erf x plus erf phi x, erf x minus erf x, erf x minus erf x again, and erf x plus erf x once more, which is extremely cool. Plus this matrix of constants of integration. Again, extremely cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.